Oopsies. Everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my November wrap-up a part two out of three this month I read 15 books and so I am splitting this up into three parts so without further ado let us get started oh. the first book that I have is the second sister by Claire Kendall and I gave this a three out of five stars ten years ago Ella's older sister Miranda disappeared without a trace the police have closed the case but Ella is convinced that Miranda was kidnapped by a man currently being held in a psychiatric hospital named Jason Thorne. Desperate to discover what actually happened to Miranda, Ella keeps digging into the case and it's basically the story of that. This was entertaining while I was reading it but I definitely don't think that this has been the best thriller that I've read lately. It was a very very slow start and it did take a while to get that creepy feeling that I was expecting from this. I just didn't really fully understand the concept of this book because because it took Ella 10 years to really start to dig into her sister's disappearance and I feel that if she really wanted to know what happened to Miranda, she would have started 10 years ago. I also think that the story was a bit predictable. There were a few twists that I didn't see coming, but for the most part I could tell everything that was going to happen in this story. I do think that the complex relationship between Ella and her parents and the way that they're all trying to navigate their grief was really interesting to read about. I also really enjoyed the relationship between Ella and her nephew Luke. I think that it was really cute and really well done. Overall, it was an average thriller. I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. Next up, I have The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved it. This follows 17-year-old Kaiva Meriden, who has spent the last 10 years in Zalendov, which is a death prison, as the prison healer. When Tilda, who is the rebel queen, arrives at her clinic, Kaiva is given the task of keeping her alive until she is able to face the trial by ordeal. This trial consists of elemental challenges that are assigned to the most dangerous criminals, but nobody has ever survived it. Kaiva ends up receiving a coded message from her family that says, don't let her die, we are coming. Kaiva makes the decision to step into the queen's role and partake in the trials herself if she she is able to survive, she and Tilda are able to go free and it's basically the story of these trials and Kaiva trying to survive. I really, really loved this book. I was instantly drawn into this world and these characters right from the prologue. I became so invested in Kaiva and her survival of these trials. They were so much fun to read about. I think that the setting of the prison was really interesting. I loved learning more about the dynamics and the relationships within the prison. Some of the guards were absolutely terrifying and they just gave me the creepiest feeling and I got so mad on multiple occasions about the way that they treated the prisoners and got away with it. I was actually really surprised when the book dove into some deeper topics like self-harm, rape, drug abuse, and other forms of abuse. Which now looking back on the setting of prison, that does kind of make sense. And I'm not really sure why I didn't realize that the book would handle these deeper topics, but I think it was really well done. I think that the characters are what really shone for me in this book. Kaiva was such an awesome character and I loved watching her grow and open up to new people and realize that she is deserving of the love. I also am the biggest fan of Tip. He is so precious and I just want to protect him at all costs. He's Kaiva's 12 year old adorable assistant in the clinic. He's basically a brother to Kaiva and their relationship is just so sweet and pure. I just think that Tip is such a ray of sunshine in such a dark place and like I said, I just want to protect him at all costs. He is just so precious. I also really liked Jaren. I think that he is the perfect blend of mysterious and charming. I loved learning more about him and I'm very intrigued to see more of his character in the next book. 
Also a big fan of Nari. She was the only female prison guard in this prison and she quickly became a friend to Kaiva and I just really liked their relationship grow and watching them learn to trust one another. I think that it was such a nice relationship in such a dark place. The ending was by far the best part of this book because it threw me for a loop. I was not expecting that. I instantly ran to my library and requested the second book and I am about four chapters into it and loving that one as well so I definitely recommend this series. It is so much fun. Five out of five stars. Next up I read Last Chance Books by Kelsey Rodkey. I gave this a 2.5 out of five stars. Madeline Moore and her family have owned the bookstore Books and More for as long as she can remember. She is destined to take over the family business but then a new bookstore called Prologue moves in across the street. They seem to be taking away all of their business and so Madeline makes it her mission to take down Prologue as well as the cute assistant manager named Jasper while she's at it. I found this book to be very meh. I just did not care about the characters. I did not care about anything that was going on. Usually I am a big fan of like competing stores. I loved Tweet Cute by Emmy Lord which is like a sandwich shop and a grilled cheese store battling it out. That was really fun. This just wasn't. I will say that this book was a very fast read. It took me under 24 hours to get through it, but I had the biggest problem with Madeline. She just bugged the shit out of me. I just could not root for her. She was so annoying in my opinion. But I will say that I did like the complex relationship that Madeline had with her mother in this. I liked watching her learn to trust her mother again and get over that sense of betrayal she felt towards her. There is some cute banter in this that I did enjoy, but like I said, I think that Madeline just rubbed me the wrong way and that really took me out of the story and didn't allow me to enjoy it as much as I could have. So 2.5 out of 5 stars. Next up I have The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars. So this follows Natasha and her family who are to be deported back to Jamaica by the end of the day. She sets off to stop this from happening and that's when she meets a boy named Daniel who is on his way to be interviewed for admittance into an Ivy League school. Over the course of 12 hours, they get to know each other and let fate decide whether or not they belong together and it's like the story of that. This book is told from three points of views. There is Daniel, Natasha, and the universe which I think was a really unique way to tell this story. I think that this is a great example of the grumpy meat sunshine trope but for once the boy is the sunshine character which I really love to see because I'm so used to it being the other way around. I really liked Natasha's character. I loved how headstrong she was and determined to stay in the country that she calls home. I liked Daniel for the most part. I think that he was like a little cinnamon roll sweetie pie, but at times he came off a little stalkerish, especially when Natasha was very adamant that she was not interested. He just kept insisting that they belonged together. It was a little bit creepy in my opinion, but I did enjoy watching them grow closer as the story progressed progressed and the day went on. I do think that this is 100% an opposites attract story. My biggest complaint of the book was definitely the insta love which I know is the whole point of this story but I just hate that trope so much unless it's done well and in my opinion this was just like meh on the insta love like I just didn't really care that much about their relationship at the beginning which again was the whole point of this book. I will say it was all worth it in the end though because that ending was perfect and I really enjoyed that part which is why I did give it a 3.5 instead of the 3 I was originally going to give it. The ending bumped it up half a star so take that as you will. If you're not into insta love maybe don't read this but it was fun while it lasted. And then the final book that I read for this part of the wrap up was Turtles All the Way Down by John Green and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. 
This follows Aza, who struggles daily just existing in her own body. Davis is the son of a billionaire whose father has gone missing and skipped town to avoid his own arrest. There is a big cash prize for anybody who is able to provide some information on the whereabouts of Mr. Pickett. So Aza and her best friend Daisy decide that they are going to find out where Mr. Pickett is and reap the benefits of that prize money. I honestly don't even know what I was expecting from this book, but what I got is not what I thought it would be. I don't even know if I enjoyed this book, honestly, which is why I only gave it a three star ranking. I know that a lot of people praise this book for the OCD and anxiety representation, but being somebody who does not suffer from either of those conditions, I didn't feel like I could connect with Aza as much as a lot of other readers have. My favorite thing about this book, though, was that the relationship didn't cure Aza's mental illness, which is one of my least favorite tropes in the entire world. So I was definitely glad that the book did not go there in the end. I also was not a fan of Daisy, Aza's friend. I will admit that I did find Daisy to be really funny at the beginning of the book, but as the story progressed, I just felt like their relationship was so toxic and the friendship was not worth what it was doing to Aza's mental health, but that's just me. Again, not a fan of Daisy at all. I don't know, the book was just very meh to me. I don't care for it. I gave it a three out of five stars. I know a lot of people adore this book, but I was just not one of those people. All right, everybody, so that was my wrap up for November 2021, part two of three. I will leave the other two linked down below if you wanna check those out as well. For the other 10 books that I read this month, let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! Yeah.